tonight's lesson, the blessedness of the victorious. You know, in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus teaches nine beatitudes, and that's not what we're going to study tonight. But in the book of Revelation, we see that the Lord's message, as is revealed by John, contains at least seven beatitudes, declarations of blessedness. When we think about this blessedness, it describes our condition. And uh, it's, the book of Revelation, while not always an easy study, it's an exciting study. Because what we realize is that Christians, whatever they face, wherever they are, whatever difficulties are in their life, they can overcome. They can have the victory in Jesus. Uh, when you think about the victory that we can have in Christ, that is certainly a blessed condition. And here we have some instructions within this book of Revelation that help us to know how and to appreciate that blessed condition that we can be in. Those who overcome uh, in the reading there uh, that was brought forth, it talks about how we can have that victory. We can realize the power that God has, the authority that Christ has. And as we uh, look through those things, we see uh, such a powerful message is brought forth. Uh, the Christians in New Testament times had to deal with some horrible things. Maybe you have some things you deal with as well, some challenges in your life. But he says that you can have that blessed condition. You can have blessedness in your life because you have the victory that's in Christ. That's what we'd like to study tonight. Uh, I'd like for you to uh, study along with me as we look at several verses in Revelation and some accompanying scriptures uh, to help us to see that blessed life that we can have. The victory that's in Christ. When we consider that, first of all, would you consider that uh, the person is blessed who reads and keeps the words. When we see that in the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 3, the scripture says, Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. At the very beginning of this writing, uh, here the message is, is that this is an important message to realize the uh, conquering victory, to realize what happens to those who overcome, to realize who wins in the end is such an important message. And so to realize that and to stay stirred up and encouraged uh, and to have that kind of uh, blessedness in your life is so very important. To be a person who is willing to open up God's word and to see what God has for his people. To see what, how God takes care of his people. And to see how even though sometimes things are very difficult, that there is something better beyond this life. But there's a, a message here beyond just reading and, and seeing that. You know, we can read and we can see heaven. Uh, we can read and through the words of scripture we can see hope. But that hope is for those who keep. That's a recurring theme we'll see tonight in our study. Those who are faithful. Those who don't give up. Those who would read the words of the Lord as revealed by John, the revelation of Jesus Christ. And those who would be willing to take those things in. And those who would keep those things which are written in it. He talks about them, the time is near, the time is near of their uh, peril that they are under. But for every age and whatever perils you face, uh, to realize that you can read and you can hear and you can keep the words of God and to have hope and comfort and to realize that you can trust what God says. Here is, is a great uh, theme that we need to realize is that you can trust of what God says. Let me ask you a question. Do you read? Now, you may say, well, I read lots of things. Yeah. Do you read the Word of God? Do you look into it for your hope? Do you care what God has to say through His Word? Blessed is he who reads. Here we have a great message in the book of Revelation, but if you never read it, you won't benefit from it. And maybe if you've not read it, you would listen to it. 
those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it. They don't give up. They do those things. Uh, I have some friends who get online together and uh, they do video chatting and they read the Bible. No comments, no, no questions, no discussion. They just read the scriptures out loud together. I think that's a, a great idea. Uh, maybe you could do that with your family in person. Uh, if you come by here sometimes, you'll hear me. Uh, sometimes I have to read things out loud. Now, you may judge me. <laughs> uh, say, well... So. Maybe that's just Paul, but sometimes I have to read it out loud. And so you might walk in the door and who's Paul got in there? Well, nobody. Paul's just reading out loud because sometimes I have to do that. I have to both read and hear so that I can try to keep uh, those things and share messages from God's word. When you read and you hear, then the word does its impact. Uh, I was thinking about Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 4. Paul's talking there about the mystery uh, that he is privileged to reveal. And he says that when they would read this letter, this letter that Paul wrote to the Ephesians, he says, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. We can read and we can know what God wants us to know. Isn't that exciting? That God has something He wants you to know. He wants me to know. I can read it. I can hear it. I can understand it. I can keep it so that I might be pleasing to God. Uh, that's a very blessed condition. To know that God speaks to us through His Word. And we have the ability to know it and to do those things that are written in that book. Who else is blessed does the scripture declare? Well, there in Revelation, you know, the person who dies in the Lord is blessed. Uh, if we continue reading in Revelation, in Revelation chapter 14 and verse 13, the scripture says this, Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, and here's what John wrote, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Blessed are those who die in the Lord. When we think about that, I preached a sermon a long time ago. Uh, you've probably heard the Native American saying, it's a good day to die. And I talked about a good way to die. And by that, I don't mean whether you have a heart attack or whether you live to an old age but a good way to die is to die in the Lord, being faithful to Him. You know, Galatians chapter 3 tells us how we get into Christ, that we're baptized into Christ. We must live faithfully in the Lord. And so we have to be in the Lord. We have to have obeyed the gospel. There might be one here who's never obeyed the gospel. And so if you die, you don't die in the Lord. Or there might be one here who is not faithful. You became a Christian, but you turned away from that. This is sounding like an invitation. We'll hold on to that for a little while. But if you die, you're not in the Lord. And you can't say that the, your death would be a blessed condition. But it's blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. When you consider also in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 1, Paul encouraged these Christians. They had been baptized into Christ. They were in the Lord. That they were to stand fast. He is therefore my beloved and longed for brethren, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord. Beloved, stand fast in the Lord. This victorious condition. You know, we, every one of us ought to ask ourselves. Probably the most important question you can ask. If I were to die today, or if the Lord would return, could I say that I could die in the Lord? That I'm a Christian and a faithful Christian. Let's consider another beatitude in Revelation. How about he who watches and keeps there in Revelation chapter 16... And verse 15, 
The scripture says, Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he should walk naked and they see his shame. We know the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. Blessed is he who watches, who is looking for the Lord to return, who is prepared for the Lord to return. That person who's watching, who is wanting and anxious for the Lord to return, but once again is prepared. You are alert. You're watching and you're ready. What would you do if the thief was coming to your house tonight? Well, some of you might just say, I'd have the police hang out. But some of you might say, I'll be watching for him. And I'll be ready. Watch and keep. It says, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. That describes someone who's unprepared. Someone who's not ready. Someone who's not even got their clothes on. He keeps his garments. He sees that the thief is coming. And he's watching out for that. I thought about what Paul wrote to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 13. Here is a church, and this is near the end of his writings. Here is a church, he says, here's a problem. Here's a problem, and here's a problem, and here's a problem, and here's a problem. Straighten these things out. I don't want to come to you with a rod, but if I have to, I will. That summarizes Paul's message. And as he's telling them how to handle all these things, he says, watch. Stand fast in the faith. Be brave and be strong. Be watching. Be alert. Be aware. Don't be asleep at the wheel. It's such a dangerous thing to be unprepared. Let's follow up on that idea of being unprepared. And when we look at another one of the Beatitudes there, he says, blessed are those who are called to the supper. In Revelation 19, in verse 9, then he said to me, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true sayings of God. Do you remember when Jesus taught about a marriage, a bridegroom who was coming? And there were ten virgins, there were five wise and five foolish, and the five wise had plenty of oil and were prepared, and the five foolish had not prepared themselves in advance for the bridegroom's coming. Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. They're ready. They're the bride of Christ. They're ready to go be at home with God. When you consider in Luke chapter 14 and verse 24, Jesus there is, he's taught a, a, a parable and he teaches about a, a supper that's being given. And he invites people and they all begin to make excuses. And he tells them to go out to the highways and the hedges and to bring in anyone who would come in. And he said, those who made excuses, those who were unprepared, they will not enter my feast. He says, for I say that to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste of my supper. What about when the Lord comes, if we're unprepared? Where will that leave us? not ready to go be and rejoice with the Lord, we'll be on the outside looking in. He'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. These Beatitudes in Revelation teach us great messages about those who can have this victorious, blessed life. Here was an interesting phrase in one of them. Those who partake in the first resurrection in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 6, it says, Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be called priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. I struggle with this a little bit. What is he talking about? What message, what lesson can we learn from Revelation 20 and verse 6? Is he talking about the resurrection after Jesus comes back again? 
He calls it the first resurrection. And if you read the context of this passage, he talks about how Satan also would be active during this time. So that doesn't fit. And I thought about what resurrection could he be meaning? You know, every one of us who's obeyed the gospel has been resurrected. Paul writes to the Romans, and he talks about our baptism. He says, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. Jesus died, he was buried, and he arose. And the message for us is, is that you've died to sin, you've been buried in baptism, and you have risen with Christ. In fact, in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1, the message that Paul preaches there is, if then you are raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is. He tells them to seek those things which are above, not the things that are below. When you're resurrected, the first resurrection, you begin living a life that is new, Walking in newness of life, in faithfulness before God. Have you ever obeyed the gospel? If you have and you're living for Him, that is a blessed condition of a victorious person. Realizing that your past iniquities have been washed away. And that you have access to the throne of God. When you stumble... You can go to God's throne and you can bring that before him and ask for his help. I hope that you realize that. I hope that I do as much as I should. That when we live our lives every day as Christians, trying to stay away uh, from sin, trying to live for God, when we are raised with Christ... When we're walking in this new life that's been given to us, a new chance, a new opportunity that's in Christ. What a blessing. Would you consider those who keep the words? We read that earlier and we won't labor too long at that. But in Revelation chapter 22 and verse 7, Jesus says, Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the word to the prophecy of this book. What is the message? Overcome, and the Lord will take care of you. Overcome, and you will have the blessings of the Lord. Overcome, and you will have the crown of life. Keep the word to the prophecy of this book. What's the opposite of keep? Lose. Throw away. When we come together on an opportunity like this, and we hear the word of God preached, and this is not just for you, this is for me as well, and I, the words come out of my mouth. The words go into your ears. We hear the word of God. Do we keep it? Do you hide the word of God in your heart that you might not sin? Do you take something with you when you leave here? What about when we come together for Bible study? What about when you're like that person in the very first point who reads and hears the Word of God? You go home and you open up and you study from the Word of God. I know one couple who, in the morning, they uh, read a devotional thought in the Word of God. And... The idea is that you want to take that with you throughout the whole day. Who reads and he keeps. You know, that was part of the Old Testament covenant in Deuteronomy 29 and verse 9. Therefore, keep the words of this covenant and do them, that you may prosper in all you do. Say about Cornelius. Cornelius had to hear some words by which he and his household could be saved. Keep the words of the prophecy of this book. I believe there's one more. The blessedness of victory are those who do his commandments. 
Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city in Revelation 22 and verse 14. Blessed are those who intend to... No, that's not what it says. Blessed are those who think... Of, no. Blessed are those who do. They get the job done. Uh, someone sent me recently a little message. Said, How are you doing with, with your health efforts? I said, I'm trying. And they sent me, I think it was a little Star Trek character. There is no try. There is only do. The Lord wants us to do his commandments. He's not given us more than we can handle. Blessed are those who do his commandments. When we do that, we have this blessed condition knowing that if we're doing the commandments of the Lord, that through his grace and through the blood of Christ, we can have the tree of life. And we can enter into the gates of the city that God has prepared for us. You know, Matthew 7 is a passage that Milton reminded us of recently where the scripture says, as Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven, those who do his commandments. When we think about the blessedness of the victorious, pictured in Revelation are those who are going to heaven and they're going to face some hard times in life, but they're going to heaven. They're going to be with God and they're going to be around his throne with the 24 elders and the, uh, the living creatures and all the uh, thousands and thousands of angels that are pictured there in the book of Revelation. And here we have that as we live, we can have this blessed life because we know that we have the victory and I want you to go away tonight knowing that as you read the Word of God and you keep it and you're prepared to die in the Lord and you're watching for the Lord's return and you're keeping and you're ready to be called to the supper, the marriage supper of the Lamb, that you have participated in the first resurrection, you're raised with Christ, that you're keeping those words and you're doing His commandments. I want you to know that your life is a blessed life and that you have victory in Christ. But here's the question. If you never obeyed the gospel, you don't have the victory. If you have fallen away and never returned to the Lord, I take no joy, I take no pleasure in telling you that you don't have the victory in Christ. We're going to sing a song in a minute, Victory in Jesus. And I hope that as we stand and we'll sing that in a moment, that you can sing that with energy and enthusiasm and with that upbeat way that Adam is attempting to lead us and that you can say, I have the victory that's in Christ and if the Lord will return, I can go home. I have the hope of heaven But if you can't, I hope the words of Scripture and the words of that song will touch your heart. And if you need to obey the gospel or you need to be restored, that you'll do that. Let's stand. We'll sing right now.